Hello guys, welcome back to another Pricey P Roblox Studio tutorial. In our prior tutorial, we have had an introductory on click detector in Roblox. We have learned how to use a click detector to make our parts and models clickable. In this lesson, we're going to learn all you need to know about click detectors. Let's first do a quick review. And in this tutorial, we're only going to be dealing with the part here. But whatever we're doing to this part, you can do the same exact thing to a model. Okay, so we have a part. If we want to make this part clickable, we're going to go to our part. We're going to click on the plus sign. And we're going to select click detector to add a click detector to the part. And now your part should be clickable. Now let's go to our service script service. We have a script in the service script service. So when you click on the part, it fires this mouse click event. And we're listening for the mouse click event here to connect to a function. Our function is the click function. And all our function is going to do is it's going to move the part up by one unit. In addition to this mouse click event, we also have three other events. We have the right mouse click event. So the mouse click event is when you click with the left button on your mouse. The right mouse click event happens when you click with the right button of your mouse. And you have the mouse hover enter is when you enter the clickable area. And the mouse hover leave is when the cursor has left the clickable area. All right, and each of these events, we're going to connect them to a different function. And here are those functions. So when you do a right click, instead of moving the part up by one, we're going to move it down by one. So we're moving by negative one. And when the mouse cursor is hovering over the clickable area, we're going to change the brick color of our part to blue. And when the cursor has left the clickable area, we're going to restore the old color of the part back. So that means now we're going to have to go up here and we're going to have to save that color, the original color of the part. So I'm going to declare a local variable and our variable here is going to be old brick color. I'm going to copy this. I'll paste it here. And that's just going to be the old color of the part. So our part is here. It's just going to be part dot brick color. So basically these are all the different events of the click detector. The next thing I want to talk about is we, we want to go over the properties of the click detector. So let's go and click on our click detector and we're going to go to our properties window. You can see there is a property called max activation distance and it, it is default to 32. So that's 32 units away from the part. If you, if you are any further than 32 units, you're not going to be able to click on the part. Uh, I'm going to change this to just eight units. So we're going to make it so that you have to be pretty close to the part in order to be able to click on it. Otherwise, if you're too far, it's not clickable. Another property of the click detector is the cursor icon. So for this, you just need an image here. So let's now go to our toolbox and we're going to pick an image. So um, let's see, maybe we'll take this image right here. I'm just going to right click and copy asset ID and I'll go and paste it in here. Hit enter and there it is. So now we have set the max distance to eight and we have declare how our cursor should look when it's hovering over the part. Let's now play and take a look. All right, so there you can see my part. If I try and click on it from here, I cannot do it. I have to get to within eight studs of the part for me to be able to click on it. And you can see my cursor has changed when I hover over it. And also the color changes as well when the cursor is hovering over the part. Now, if I do a left click, the part is moving up. And if I do a right click, the part is moving down. There's one more thing I'd like to mention is that uh, these four events, when it fires the event, the player who activated those events is automatically passed into the function. 
So here I'm just gonna catch the player that is being passed in to the click function. And let's make the part say the name of the player. So we're gonna go up here, we're gonna add a chat service. So local chat service. We'll set it equals to game colon get service chat. All right, and we'll go into this function. Inside this function, we're gonna make the part say the player's name, the player who clicks the part. So we're gonna say chat service, colon chat, which is the function of the chat service. And our first parameter is gonna be the part. So it's gonna be part. Our second parameter, we're just gonna say the name the, the, the uh, display name of the player. So we're gonna say player dart display name. All right, so the player, the player here is the player that is being passed in automatically by these events. Let's play and take a look. So there is the part again, and again, if I try and click from here, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I have to go here. Oh, there it is. I have to go closer. All right, I'm close enough. Now I can click, and there it goes. It says the name of the person who clicks on it. And everyone, those are all the different properties and different events of the click detector in Roblox.